public facilities and improvements with community development block grant funds. Project selection. CDBG funded public facilities and improvements can be an important part of a community development strategy. The CDBG program identifies publicly owned facilities and infrastructure, such as streets, playgrounds, underground utilities, and buildings owned by nonprofits that are open to the general public as public facilities and improvements. Nationwide, CDBG investment in public facilities and improvements is significant. Annually, nearly one-third of all CDBG dollars and more than one-half of state CDBG dollars are devoted to public facilities and improvements. Safe and accessible infrastructure is essential to quality of life and to building communities that support community diversity and stability. In today's world, our communities face increasingly complex challenges, from economic or social shocks and stresses to natural disasters. These challenges demand that communities be resourceful. Communities can do more with less by designing projects to maximize the benefit you receive from the investment. A CDBG grantee will want to explore the potential to design infrastructure investments that extend the reach of your CDBG funds by directly benefiting individuals and the larger community while also achieving other objectives. For example, a Midwest community bought out properties in a floodplain and developed an area on its riverfront to serve as a floodwater retention area during storms. The area also includes a natural amphitheater used by the community for outdoor concerts and festivals. Another example is a New England town that completed a multi-year phase project to comprehensively improve the streets and underground utilities in a lower-income neighborhood adjacent to a Superfund site. The storm drainage component of the project eliminated frequent flooding of yards and basements of homes and, by incorporating state-of-the-art storm drainage standards, improved the quality of water discharged into the nearby wetlands resource area. New water mains also reduced the risk of contaminant infiltration, an important improvement given the project's location downhill from the Superfund site. The project also connected the neighborhood to an adjacent business district with new sidewalks. These combined improvements have resulted in economic, social, and physical benefits for the community. In addition to designing projects with multiple benefits, Investments in public facilities and improvements can be strengthened by working with partners and leveraging non-CDBG resources. In fact, public facilities and improvements projects rarely occur without the use of one or more partners or sources of funding. Combining multiple funding sources will often enable a project to move forward or to expand in such a way to provide a wider range of benefits to the community. Furthermore, partnerships and coordination, such as those related to utilities and roadway projects, help the construction process proceed more smoothly and to save money. Imagine a project to replace water and sewer lines on a street. If the grantee were to coordinate with a natural gas company planning to replace gas lines, their coordination would allow for the road to be opened only once. This would minimize disruption to neighboring properties, pedestrians, and vehicular traffic, and would save costs. We've discussed why project selection is important. Now let's discuss how to select a project. A key concept in sound project selection is to find the best projects that need funding, not funding that needs a project. This is more than a play on words. Grantees can use modules within the Econ Planning Suite and Toolkits to help identify their community development needs and make data-driven, place-based investment decisions. A needs determination should be based on data. Data may come from the American Community Survey or other federal sources, local sources, surveys, studies, and planning documents, such as a capital improvement plan or a consolidated plan. When assessing needs and considering potential activities, you may ask, how do the needs of the project area 
compared to the rest of the municipality and region. Are there gaps in the availability of and accessibility to facilities and improvements when compared to a larger area? Is there a clear relationship between the problem or existing condition and the project's outcome? Why is this project in need of funds more than other potential projects? Community engagement is important at all stages of public facilities and improvement projects, but especially when determining needs. Grantees are encouraged to conduct outreach beyond the mandatory public hearings and seek to engage with property owners and individual community members. You can do this by conducting surveys, meeting with people in small groups, and involving community organizations in planning. By involving stakeholders in the project selection process, your project can be more responsive to community needs. Greater community support also will help you deal with any unforeseen issues or setbacks later on. One of the first steps in selecting public facilities and improvements projects is to identify whether potential projects are eligible for CDBG funding. Acquisition, construction, reconstruction, Rehabilitation and installation of public facilities and improvements are eligible activities. Examples of public facilities include centers for seniors, persons with disabilities, youth and child care centers, community centers, homeless shelters, housing for people with special needs, libraries, health clinics, and neighborhood fire stations. Parks and recreational facilities are also public facilities as are buildings owned by nonprofit organizations that serve the public. Improvements in the phrase public facilities and improvements are often referred to as infrastructure projects by state and local governments. A few examples include streets and sidewalks, water and sewer improvements, utility lines, flood and drainage systems, and tree planting. Such improvements can also include public art installation, and aesthetic improvements like decorative street lighting, benches, and planters. You will need to keep in mind several things as you consider potential public facilities and improvements activities as there are several restrictions. Maintenance and repairs of publicly owned streets, parks, and other facilities are ineligible activities. Sometimes there is a gray area between what is considered maintenance or repairs versus construction or rehabilitation. The regulations specifically state certain items are ineligible in 570.207B2I, for example, pothole repairs. Generally, improvements with a useful life of less than five to eight years are considered repairs and not new construction. For example, road sealing is considered maintenance, while a new asphalt overlay is considered construction. Clearance, demolition, and removal of buildings and improvements are eligible activities. This includes movement of structures to other sites and remediation of environmental contamination. CDBG cannot cover facilities operating costs. The purchase of construction equipment is generally ineligible. However, Purchasing equipment for use as part of a solid waste disposal facility's operation is eligible. Buildings used for the general conduct of government cannot be assisted, but CDBG funds can be used at these properties to remove architectural barriers to provide access for people with disabilities. In mixed-use facilities, CDBG may be used if CDBG activities will function in a separate and distinct area and costs associated with these activities can be separated out from the overall facility. Here's a tip. In the case of less common projects or particularly complicated projects, consult with your HUD field representative or state program staff to ensure that your project is eligible. Examples of less common projects include construction of tornado shelters, sewer pump stations, Program facilities by nonprofits, including shelters and group homes. Facilities to host job training. Shared workspace and incubator sites, including micro enterprises and privately owned utilities. 
The installation of broadband infrastructure is an eligible CDBG activity that promotes economic development and financial security by connecting individuals to jobs, schools, financial institutions, and healthcare providers, and helps communities prepare for and respond to natural disasters or other emergencies. While broadband installation is an eligible CDBG activity, remember you must also meet a national objective. For grantees interested in pursuing installation of broadband, be sure to consult your local HUD field office when determining the appropriate national objective. Once you have determined whether an activity is eligible, you will need to document how it meets one of three national objectives. Benefit to low- and moderate-income persons. Prevention or elimination of slums and blight. Addressing an urgent need that immediately threatens the health and welfare of the community and for which other financial resources are not available. The most frequently used national objective for public facilities and improvements is benefit to low- and moderate-income persons on an area-wide basis. When qualifying public facilities and improvements activities on an area-wide basis, it is essential to properly identify the service area. Another consideration is that, on the whole, activities cannot provide benefit to moderate-income persons to the exclusion of low-income persons. Public facilities and improvements activities can also meet the low-mod limited clientele, low-mod housing, low-mod jobs, urgent need, or elimination of slums and blight national objectives. For more information on how to qualify public facilities and improvements activities, please refer to the CDBG 101 video product on the Explore CDBG section of the HUD Exchange website. During project selection, grantees will also need to consider the amount of CDBG and other funds that are required for the project. Some questions they may ask are, what proportion of our annual CDBG budget will we need to set aside for this project? Will this project require multiple years of funding? What other resources are necessary for this project? Should we consider seeking a Section 108 loan to finance the project? Throughout the project selection process, grantees should look for projects that can leverage other funding and to create partnerships that can contribute resources to the project. Keep in mind that you can offset some of the costs of CDBG investments through assessments on properties owned by persons who are not low and moderate income and by charging modest fees for use of CDBG-funded facilities. A starting point for identifying partnership opportunities is for grantees to consider how their project relates to the larger community environment. Grantees should explore governmental, private, and philanthropic funding and their ability to build partnerships that advance their goals. Some potential public funding sources include local and regional government funding, state programs, the Federal Communication Commission's Lifeline Program, Department of Agriculture, Department of Commerce, Department of Transportation, Department of Labor, EPA, and FEMA. Furthermore, CDBG can be paired with private funds, such as developer contributions, nonprofit agency matches, and foundation grants. The best public, private, and federal, state, and local partnerships build from a common goal. Partnering with other municipal departments, utility companies, nonprofit service providers, and business owners can enhance your investments in public facilities and improvements. Here are some examples. Example 1. A town uses CDBG funds to reconstruct sidewalks and install ramps accessible to persons with disabilities along the town's main street. The funds are used to leverage a local real estate developer's investment in the redevelopment of a property near Main Street as an independent living facility, allowing residents a safe path of travel to the nearby business district. Example 2. A city uses CDBG funds to replace an aging water main near a blighted vacant site, facilitating a private investor's redevelopment of the site as a mixed-use development that attracts new residents and businesses to the area. 
In both cases, the value of the CDBG investment is compounded by private investment and results in economic and quality of life benefits to the surrounding community. Finally, as you select your projects, be mindful of the project timeline. Ask yourself, what is the timeline for the activity? Remember, entitlement grantees need to keep an eye on timely expenditure requirements, and state CDBG grantees need to be mindful of timely distribution of funds. Keep in mind that subgrantees and subrecipients often face even shorter timelines to complete their grants than grantees, as it takes time for the state or entitlement to conduct a competitive award process. All grantees should be mindful of these timelines when considering projects that will require a lengthy planning process or involve pre-development work, such as land acquisition, demolition, or site preparation. One-way grantees can manage large projects to ensure timely expenditure of funds is to divide it into multiple phases. Entitlement grantees can plan to use CDBG funds over multiple awards, ensuring that they spend funds from each award in a timely way. For units of general local government participating in the state CDBG program, phasing public facilities and improvements projects is trickier as funding is not always assured from year to year. In these cases, it is important to ensure that each phase of work can stand as a complete project on its own. Here's a tip. Always make sure you build an extra time in your schedule to make sure you can meet timely expenditure requirements even if the project runs behind schedule. Thanks for watching. To continue viewing, click the Planning and Designing the Project video below.